And the idea with print on demand is do everything virtually on demand, sell first, then print and ship. Uh, that way it allows people to build a business faster without the need of inventory and having a high quality product for the end users. Hello, fabulous person, Beate Shillette here, the growth architect. Welcome back to the Business Growth Architect Show, where we bring you cutting edge business strategies from some of the world's most successful entrepreneurs, business transformation experts and visionaries who want to help you to scale your impact. Look for one tangible strategy that you can take back and implement right away. And now back to our guest. Hello, everyone. This is your host, Beate Chalet, the Growth Architect, and welcome to another episode of the Business Growth Architect Show. Today, we're going to talk to Victor Pena, who has a big operation behind him and does a lot of really interesting things. So, Victor, thank you so much for being here and tell everybody, who are you? Hi, thank you, Beate. Thank you for having me here. You know, my main goal is to empower business owners globally to thrive with print on demand and e-commerce, you know, so whatever I can do to bring value to business owners out there and inspiring entrepreneurs, then that's what I'm here to do. So, uh, you know, we're here at a uh, beautiful, gloomy uh, Southern California this, this time of year, but, um, you know, that's where our main headquarters is in California in Orange County and Irvine. And, you know, at Omniprint, we're, we're a manufacturer that helps people all over the world um, use print on demand to print their merchandise, apparel, t-shirts, hoodies, that kind of stuff. Just picture, you know, anybody that has an Etsy store or a Shopify store, uh, you know, and they're printing, you know, it's wine o'clock shirts and uh, all sorts of different types of, of, of apparel and merchandise. Uh, a lot of them are using our equipment, our software, our inks to be able to empower them to win. Um, and the idea with print on demand is do everything virtually on demand, sell first, then print and ship. Uh, that way it allows people to build a business faster without the need of inventory and having a high quality product for the end user. So that, that's kind of, uh, you know, my, my main business and, and uh, you know, uh, that's what we're here to do. I love that. And um, I'm going to ask sort of an off, off scripted question here because I get that a lot. And I don't know if you get that a lot, but, it's, but you just mentioned it. Is it not unethical to sell something you don't even have? What's the idea behind that? Oh, you know, um, let me tell you something. The most unethical to do thing that you can do, the most unethical thing that you can do <laughs> is not sell. Right. Not sell. Why? Because, you know, you you have something that's going to give value to others in the marketplace. And if your belief is there that you're giving value, then, you know, it, it's in the best interest of your your clients that you actually help them through the process of buying your product. Right. And and the idea is it's not that you don't have it right when it comes to on demand, um, because most of our customers have the equipment there. Uh, and as soon as they sh their, their order pops up, uh, they grab the blank, they print the image, and they ship it, right? So um, all of our customers are tuned up like that. You know, what they don't have is a ton of inventory that's just sitting there losing money, um, you know, that, that they don't know if it's going to sell, right? So that's, that's the idea with the, and the concept with on demand is that you're only shipping what you sell. And normally the shipping... Uh, is fast for all of our customers. I love that. You know, I get, I get this. I get this all the time where I have um, people that say, how can you sell this if you haven't even created it? I'm like, well, if somebody gives me $20,000, you bet I'm going to be creating it on the spot because the incentive is right there. So, so a big takeaway here for everyone listening is this is really one of the secrets of successful business owners is that they try to not have the inventory or try to not spend their valuable time creating product services, presentations and things, unless they know there's an actual need for it. So sell it first and then uh, deliver it. Um, my next question, um, you are, you know, judging by what I found about you uh, poking around on the internet a little bit, 
you are a one of a kind guy. So what is your superpower, your sweet spot, your differentiation factor, your unapologetic value proposition? What makes Victor, Victor? Yeah, so I, I think there's something important that we all have to think about, right? For me, I think I have a, a power of vision, right? A power of vision that um, I'm not, I'm not really thinking as much as, all right, well, what, what do I have to do today? What's on my to-do list? What's on my hit list, right? I'm thinking about what, what the future is um, and where I can take our products, our team, right? And if you look at our, what, our, what our vision is and our mission, right? We want to empower millions of business owners, right? So having that vision on how you do it helps you in your day-to-day, -day, right? Um, for, an, for example, and we tie it into the, to the first thing that you talked about. Uh, the first machine that I ever sold uh, was not even there when the customer paid for it. Right. So I, I sold the machine. I showed them the table. The table was there, but there was no machine on the table. And I said, hey, look, the machine's going to do this. It's going to do that. It's going to empower you to build your business in these ways. Uh, you know, I only need for you to pay for it up front so I can get the parts so I can build it. Right. Um, and, and why? Because I had a vision that I was going to deliver and I was committed enough to do it because it's not about that transaction. Uh, it's about what you can deliver to the customer so that they can win, right? So um, it's hard to do that on a day-to-day -day without having a vision, right? So, um, and that's the, that's the long-winded answer, but number one thing that I always try to fuel myself with is vision. So um, that leads me to believe one thing about you, that you must be pretty, pretty keen or pretty good at the mindset part of, of uh, success because everybody who has studied mindset and gratitude and um, finding your way somewhere knows that you got to stake a mark somewhere. So what, what part does mindset play in your, in your business and in your, in your life? I think it is the top thing, right? So for example, right now, I think we're about, you know, we have 80, 85 employees, right? And my job is to get to help them grow their mindset. So what does that mean? If you look at uh, any leader, right? Um, any leader is always a limitator to their team because there's no team that's going to be under you that's going to be greater than you. It just doesn't happen. If you look at like John Maxwell's Laws of Leadership, uh, he has some of, the, some of those concepts uh, that are super important that I've learned from, right? So my main job is to keep working at it because you just don't come out of bed uh, saying, hey, you know what, uh, for whatever reason, my beliefs are bigger and better today than they were. Actually, no, it takes like a recipe. My recipe is getting up, looking at my gratitude list, my goal list, right? And then getting to the gym, right? And then coming up with the next steps of vision uh, after some body training, and then I train my mind and to what I'm going to achieve, you know, that, that year, the next year, what does the 10 years um, ahead look like? So it takes some of that flexing of your, your mindset muscle with, with actual working on it, right? So um, it's hard to look at memes and hard to look at motivational videos without working on yourself. I really like that. I'm, I'm right there with you. I think that we get sometimes as business owners, you know, and as a strategist, I see that um, is that they get too caught up in the little details and they forget where the destination is and then they can't see the destination anymore because they're somewhere uh, cleaning up boxes in the storage room instead of focusing on other things. So what is <laughs> I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you bring that up because I'm not the box cleaner kind of guy. I think uh, my, my wife can attest to that because. <laughs> You know, I, I'm the guy that opens the cupboard and I go for the task of pulling out whatever's in there and forget to close it. So, <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> so what is what does strategy mean for you? Uh, so strategy is is uh, it's something that, I, you know, honestly, I, I think it's kind of an overused word, to be honest with you, because a lot of people use it. Um, 
to to say hey well i'm gonna i'm gonna have like a a, a few pieces of of ideas and how we get to either do more sell more grow more right um but i think if we look at it how can how can we align what we're doing with the goals of our customers and our clients then that makes it a lot easier because you you end up saying hey you know what i actually helped um, these clients grow this year how did we do that so you got to know how you're helping your clients grow so that you can turn that data back into what you're going to do for the next few years right so i'm a big like believer in uh data like don't come at me with all these hypothetical ideas show me what it's looking like what we actually have accomplished what the what those uh, uh data points are and then we can come up with something for for uh you know a strategy for the future right so that's kind of how i look at it um and and you know it, it helps us kind of start honing in stuff versus talking a lot and then nothing's really getting done you know so you're saying that in order for you to devise a strategy, you want data points that support ideas to create a strategy, but the strategy without, without um, backup to you is meaningless, if I'm hearing yeah. this Yeah, exactly. And plus, um, it, all has to, it all has to go down to uh, what we're actually all here doing, right? Um, and 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 what does that mean? At the beginning, you're like, okay, well, what is my vision, right? My vision is to not go bankrupt, to be able to eat, you know, to be able to like not fail payroll. Those are the initial, like your mission, right? Um, and then you're like, well, after that, then what are we here to do? Now we're here um, every single day. We all show up to help our customers grow. Uh, so that means that if you're if you're uh, devising a strategy that doesn't include that fundamental step, that fundamental um, part of the plan, then it gets more difficult because what do you end up doing? You end up saying, hey, how many uh, sales do we need next year to reach our revenue goal? Instead of saying, hey, how many creators out there are we going to make rich and how are we going to make millionaires? so that we can achieve our goals together, right? So it's a, it's a different way of looking at it. It's interesting that you say that, Victor, because that's like one of the things when I devise strategies or growth plans that I look at first is like, what is the, what is the big vision of, of you? What do you? What do you try to accomplish? Because it's not about making sales. It's about impacting lives by the services that we provide. And a lot of people are, uh, confusing, confusing uh, the one with the other. So um, going back to strategy, what is your favorite strategy? <laughs> uh, so my, my, my top favorite strategy, right, um, has always been traditionally sales cures all, right? Sales cures all. Uh, what does that mean? It means that uh, sometimes we get, we get, into a, a mindset or, or we get into a, a rut where um, you're, you're not focused on the main thing. And then you start measuring vanity stuff, uh, which then doesn't help you get to your, to your mission to help your clients, right? So for example, once, and, and remember, once you have your vision ready and you know that you're helping your clients, then guess what? Now you got to say, sales cures all. And if you don't have a selling system to reliably do that on a daily basis, then you know you can work on that, right? You could say, okay, well, if, I, if, if my sales are like wishy-washy up and down all the time, and I don't know what those levers are that keeps them going in the right direction, then now you know, okay, well, uh, am I doing the right marketing to get the right flow of my ideal customer in our pipeline? Uh, are my team members train properly to deliver the value, to make those orders, right? And then that way, um, you know, you, you have a key component of running a success, successful business is top line revenue, right? And not a lot of people talk about that uh, because it's, you know, um, it's, it's uh, I guess, more of a, hey, well, why, why are we talking about selling? But the reality is, and I started this from zero, the reality is you cannot move up and inspire your employees, inspire your customers 
if you don't have a healthy business that's that's selling that has selling as a priority, right? Uh, and so so that's that's like a top thing uh, in my mind all the time. I love that. So what would you say to somebody that says, oh, so you're talking about a funnel? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he, la- he laughs. Victor laughs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. It's just because everybody, uh, everybody thinks of that first, right? Because mm-hmm. it's a, it's a, it's also a sexy term, right? So, for example, um, we we do some boot camps sometimes for our customers, uh, and it's about how how do we help them grow, right? And a, and a question I get all the time is, hey, uh, you know, how can I build a funnel? to you know help my to to make more money right so everybody uses the term funnel uh, but i like to use it into like all right what's what's the flow right of your service Uh, do you have the right offer do you have the right offer to entice people to start connecting with you right Uh, and then from there do you have the right way of guiding your customer through a decision uh, of why they look at your products right and then do you have strategies to be able to convert them into customers if it's the right product to help them grow, right? Um, that's what a lot of people call a funnel, but it's just a very simplistic way of, of looking at it, uh, calling it, hey, what, what my, my flow and my conversion and my retention strategies for the business. I agree with you. I think that the term funnel is also... Um if I'm really honest about it, Victor, a little bit abused by internet marketers that are terrorizing you with these click-through rates and open rates and conversion rates. Um, And while that there's a place and a time for that, I think that at the end of the day, what you said is that if you focus on your client and the behavior of your client, and then you create the flow, um, also known as some sort of a funnel, so that your client feels that they are going on a journey with you until they're being led to the decision. It's, a, it's kind of a lot easier. How many of these different sales uh, flow strategies, if I would call them that way, do you have? Do you have more than one? Yeah, so we, we have uh, several ways. For example, we have education, right? We have our, our YouTube channel uh, where we're, we're like dropping so much value there for people. So it gets them plugged into the brand. We also have like live events that we do, like trade shows uh, is another pillar of, of how we get attention. We have all sorts of social media uh, out there. On top of that, our big, you know, marketing list, um, you know, and, and uh, probably hundreds of landing pages out there for people, giving them free stuff, free ways of learning and growing their business. And, and if, if our product seems to be the next step for them, then we have ways to, you know, have them uh, talk to a specialist here, and then they actually coach them on what they're trying to do. Uh, our, our first question uh, in our, in our uh, you know, for all of our specialists here is how, tell me about your business, right? Tell me about your business and tell me about your goals. It's not like, let me share with you features and benefits of our equipment. We don't even discuss that at the beginning. You know, this is really brilliant because I, I, I think that that is such an important part of this interview. And I want you all to really, really listen to what Victor just shared with you. Um, yes, it's important that you got your product down, that you know what you're doing. But really, the majority of your time, especially as you're building your business or you want to get to consistent sales results, is all about making sure that you have these actions in place that create these streams of interested people coming to you, prospects that are knocking on the door and looking and then making sure that you got what they need and and places uh, and things in place. Um, I think that one of the big differentiation factors, Victor, of what you do at Omniprint really is the educational piece that you are adding. Was that something that you had, you know, because we really always talk strategy here, was that something that you had in mind when you started or was this something that you came up with as you wanted to grow your business and there was this aha moment where you said, I got to help these people? Yeah, so, so that's a super important question, right? And, and I'll tell you how I did it. So um, we're, we're playing in a game where the companies that are here are, are hundreds of years old, right? Unlimited marketing budgets, unlimited everything budgets right? Um, and at the beginning, I didn't want to 
be in the forefront. I, you know, as a matter of fact, like, you know, all my stuff was private. Um, you know, I had two followers, one was my mom and the other one was my wife, you know, and, and, <laughs> and, and, and uh, I, I liked it like that. Right. But, but the reality is if, if, if I was to, and this is after reading a great book that everybody has to read it, Blue Ocean Strategy. All right. Um, what, what can you do different that can have somebody connect to you and your story that you can go hard on that, that the competition is not even there, right? Uh, our competition is not on education. They're not on social media. They're not on YouTube. They don't, they don't even know what to post yet. They don't have a strategy for it because it's a corporate environment. It's about uh, we, how, how can we be more silent versus uh, how can we help our entrepreneurs, right? So uh, I made a, a clear decision that I was going to get more attention than anyone else and that we were going to do more content than anyone else. Uh, and that was going to drive our sales, um, you know, and at least at the very minimum, it was going to help those people out there uh, start thinking of how they can grow their business, right? So it's something that I, that I came up with right after reading that book, because the question I asked myself is, what can I implement that's, that's different, that, that will be really, really hard for these guys to even try, you know? So uh, well, your, your, your competition talks about the quality of the ink and uh, the number of machines that they have and how much output that they can make. That's what they're yeah. talking about and right. how clean the facilities are and how, how promptly that they ship. And this is something that, you know, in, in, in growth architecture, I mean, I got, an, I got news for you. If, if you have to tell your customers that you use good ink, you should not be in business. If you need to tell your customers that you have the machines, you should not be in business. I expect that from you. It's that extra thing that makes me want to be with you. Your genuine desire to support me as a business owner and to give me more than just good ink because I don't have any idea what I'm doing. I'm just having this idea of this cute t-shirt. So I, I, I love that you say that because um, sometimes I think these actions or strategies are a little counterintuitive because why would you be spending all this money on all of that stuff? If, yeah. it, you know, how, how do you even connect that? And I think it's very critical that you said that and shared that with our audience, that you made a conscious decision because you read something and you knew this was your differentiation factor. So, yeah. What? So this is the thing. Um, the, the, the reality is having the best products, uh, you know, my background is engineering, right? So um, I, I already knew how to have the best products, right? That's, that's like, for me, that's a no brainer. That's par for the course. You know, we have product of the year for the last five years. All right. And that's, that's competing with these guys. We have the best ink that we make uh, here in California that prints on, uh, you know, even fabrics that th their stuff can't print on, right? So why didn't I decide to use any of that? Because I, I you know, that stuff we have to do, right? It's, it's already done. Even as a new, new player in the, in the industry, uh, you should show up with bigger, better, faster product, right? Um, and and um, so that your customers can win. Now, on top of that, what are you willing to do on top of that? That's that's the question that you got to ask yourself. That's the, that's that's amazing. That's a really great uh, a, a great line. What are you going to do beyond what you normally do to be excellent in your yeah. business? You know the, the 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 going way way further. Um, a, a quick shift into a personal question. Yeah. How important is family to you? You said that your first two followers were your wife and your mom. So what, what part does that play in how you do business? Yeah, so, you know, family is always an important part because where is the support coming from? Because um, if everybody says it, um, if, if they have like enough, enough years in business that you're, you better be like psychotic to become an entrepreneur and a business owner, right? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> I haven't, I have not heard quite it called quite that way, but yes, I'll make a note of it. Psychotic. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Seriously. Well, what, what makes you, you know, keep, keep getting up through the ups and downs, Holy getting punched smokes, in the yeah. face and all that on a, on a daily basis. Right. Um, and where to have the support. Cause I, you know, I also have those times. So 
you know, that that's where my wife comes in. She's stronger than me. And she, she, uh, you know, lifts me up and helps me push and refocus me to what the big targets are, uh, what our, our, our family targets are uh, and all that. So uh, that, that makes you stop thinking about what your difficulties are as a business owner for give for today and start thinking about, well, what's the legacy that you're building together, right? And then uh, it gets you out of that funk and you move on. I love that. Do you have any tips for people that are crazy busy on how to shift? I, I think it's important for us to define what crazy busy is, right? Like using your time for the most impactful things. Uh, and that's something that I've worked on myself, right? Uh, so that I can be focused on delivering value, like doing stuff like this um, delivers more value than me cleaning the warehouse or messing around with other stuff, right? You know, one of, uh, you know, you, you dealt with my executive project manager, Wendy and her her job is to make me as impactful as possible in whatever I'm doing and whatever gets on the calendar has to have impact. Uh, if you're doing so much busy work that you end up really not moving forward, then reevaluate the work that you're doing. Because in my experience, what I did before, uh, when stuff got difficult, I went back to the task that I know that I could do and that I could do well versus dealing with the stuff that you have to learn through, push through, uh, and motivate yourself through, right? And that are, that are more important for your business. Um, and that's going to help you start pushing through as an entrepreneur, right? Remove the stuff that it's easy to do, that you can hire someone to do. Um, and and this, is, this is one of the things I cover in some other talks, but I'm going to drop it here. Um, people do not cost you money, right? People do not cost you money. Start hiring people to do more of these tasks for you. Uh, align them with your vision. And then you'll see that you're, you will be forced to be better and raise yourself and be greater when you have, we now have people there um, that you have to inspire to grow, right? So that's some of, the, some of the stuff that I've used to keep pushing forward and to be raising my own skills uh, and, and stop, stop doing the stuff that, uh, I need to fire myself for like that. Yeah. I got to probably about a list of 15 things right now. I need to fire myself for, um, that, <laughs> right? that, that, that's yeah. a, you, you, because once you, when, when you, when, when you scale up and, you know, and it's the messy middle, it does get a little messy sometimes until you got it figured out. So, uh, patience, everyone, uh, it is, uh, just listen to people like Victor and follow his advice and, uh, it'll be okay. But, you know, business is cyclical. Sometimes you just are in the, you know, with your hands dirty on your, on your knees, trying to figure out how to, how to get it all organized, but get rid of as much stuff as you possibly can that uh, ties up your time because you need to do what you're best at, which is run the shop. Victor, uh, this has been really amazing. So um, how can we find you and how can our audience, you know, perhaps those who want to look into using uh, their own designs and uh, print on demand, how can they, how can they find you? Where can we follow you? Yeah, definitely. We have a lot of content uh, at Omniprint International everywhere, YouTube, Instagram, uh, LinkedIn. Uh, you can find us there. Me, uh, I'm more active on my, you know, I'm pretty much on every platform uh, posting all day on my uh, Instagram, Victor underscore H underscore Pena. And, um, you know, a, a lot of tips that I'm using on a daily basis, you can see them there. You know, I'm fairly transparent with what I do on a daily basis to help people grow uh, and to have my, my, you know, entrepreneur family um, know what are these daily things that you have to do to, to grow your business, right? So uh, also, uh, you know, omniprintonline.com, if you guys want to uh, get a free demo of, you know, how our machines can help you grow. You can, you can uh, ask for one there. Uh, but yeah, uh, super, super good to be here. Make sure you guys connect with me uh, and, uh, you know, plug in. Thank you so much. And we make sure that all of this information is also in the show notes. You've been an amazing guest. I appreciate you uh, sharing openly and not holding anything back. And in just such a great conversational matter on what matters to you. So thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Beyonce, for having me here. It's a real pleasure.
And that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching the Business Growth Architect Show. This is your host, Beate Schillett. And that's it for us today. Thank you for listening and watching the Business Growth Architect Show. I enjoyed having you here. And for accountability, just take one of the strategies that you have heard, one thing that you can implement in your business immediately. Please leave comments. Don't forget to like and share this show. And if you have any questions about business, please put them in the comments. We are here for you. We're here to support you and help you to grow, build, and scale your own business. For more advice, please check out our website in the show notes below. Thank you again. This is Beata Schillett, The Growth Architect, and goodbye.